What's happening everyone? I'm Carmine and you're watching Super Carmio. In today's episode, we're going to be walking through the setup of new fuel injectors in the Miata. Now, it goes without saying that anytime you introduce more airflow into your engine, with this case a turbo, you're going to need upgraded fuel injectors to compensate with more fuel. In this case, we're going with Flowforce 640cc injectors because they come with everything you need to use EV14 injectors on your stock fuel rail. At the end of the episode, I'm also going to walk through the Mega Squirt setup of these new injectors. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we want to do before we remove the fuel rail is just to get some of the fuel pressure out of the lines. And a quick way to do that is just to unplug the yellow connector under the dash, which is connected to the fuel pump relay. So after we disconnect that, we're going to basically crank the car and nothing should happen. So now the fuel pressure should be relieved, but uh, I also like to open the gas cap as well. So we'll do that and get everything on the lines. So the fuel rail is held down by these three bolts right here. Um, but before we could remove that, there's some stuff in the way. There's a solenoid right here, and then we'll also remove this PCB line right here. Next, we'll remove the vacuum line and then the electro connector to this solenoid. Now, normally there's a clip right here. Uh, mine's broken, but it'll just push this tab in and slide it out. And then you can remove this. Okay, with that solenoid out of the way, we'll just tuck this electrical connector out of the way as well. And then I'm gonna remove this bracket um, just to make the fuel rail removal easier. And since that clip is broken, I probably won't reinstall it. And next we'll remove the fuel injector connectors and get that out of the way. Okay, so before we remove these bolts, I just want to make a note. There are three isolators underneath uh, these bolts where the fuel rail mounts. Do not want to lose those because you are going to need those for reinstallation. And these are 12 millimeter bolts here. And before we could have enough room to pull the fuel rail off, we'll also disconnect the fuel feed and return lines. And these lines are going to be on there pretty good, so you might have to just slightly move it around before you can pull it. And there's probably going to be some fuel dripping out of here. Not too bad though. Okay, after we have the lines off, we should be able to freely pull the fuel rail up. It also might be a good idea to release the fuel injectors from the rail just to make it a little easier. But uh, after I do that, I can just pull the rail up here. I'll just rest it right there and then pull out the old fuel injectors. All right, so here's the injector. It's an EV14 style, which means it's going to be a lot shorter than the OEM injectors. But uh, Flow Force includes everything you'll need to adapt this to the stock fuel rail. So we have the injector and then bottom cushion that will slide into place right here. There's a little groove that will hold it. And then you have a top hat adapter and this goes on top of the injector, basically spaces the injector so that it's longer in relation to the fuel rail. And then you have this O-ring, it's going to slide into this groove on the top hat. And then this fuel filter, it's going to go inside the top hat basket first. Now with all of these O-rings, so here and here, you're going to want to lube them really nicely with this included dielectric grease. Um, that's just so that when you install these, uh, the O-rings won't tear, causing fuel leaks. All right, let's get these things assembled. Okay, then we'll install our new fuel injectors. Now you could either put them inside of the motor or you could install on the fuel rail. I feel like there's gonna be more clearance if I just drop all four of them inside of the ports and then put the rail on top of it, just making sure that it's uh, secured. Uh, but yeah, let's do it. Ok, 
okay with the fuel injector securely in place, we're gonna very carefully install the fuel rail on top of them. Before we bolt the fuel rail down, we're not gonna forget about these isolators and you actually need this little washer that's supplied with the kit to go on top. Just feed these in very carefully. And again, since these are EV14 injectors, you will need this little pigtail adapter that will go to the EV14 on this side and the stock injector connector on this side. So let's hook those up. Now we'll connect these adapters to the fuel injector harness. Okay, with the injectors installed and connected, we're just gonna reconnect all of the stock fuel lines as well as that solenoid over there and get everything back in place. All right, so at this point, our injectors are installed and connected and mechanically everything is sound. So next we're gonna open up Tuner Studio and adjust Megasquirt to account for these new fuel injectors. All right, so we're gonna open up Tuner Studio and then reload our project, in this case Miata. And then we're gonna to go to basic settings and then under engine and sequential settings, we'll go to our required fuel, which is basically a calculator that's gonna calculate the base pulse width depending on your engine size and injector size. It's basically an approximation of how much fuel is gonna be required to maintain 14.7 AFR, and it's gonna be a scale and multiplier used across your fuel map. Next thing we're gonna set is the dead time under fuel settings, and this is basically the amount of time it's gonna take for the injector to fully open up before it flows at its full capacity. Now usually these dead times are rated at the battery voltage, as it'll take longer if the voltage is lower, You'll want to get these figures from the injector manufacturer, in this case Flowforce. Alright, now that we're done making our adjustments in Tuner Studio, we're just going to remember to put on our gas cap and then reconnect that connector that controls the fuel pump relay under the dash. And then we'll try starting it. Now after you do start it, you do want to be really uh, observant of any type of fuel leaks uh, around the fuel injectors or the rail. All right, fellas, well, the injectors are installed. Everything looks good, no leaks. Um, you still are gonna have to make some more adjustments to your fuel table to account for the new injector flow, but it's not a big deal. I'll do a more in-depth tune-in video once we get this car actually turboed, since it'll require a complete retune at that point. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.